YouTube fam, it's good to be back. Today, we're gonna be closing our series on M3 rotations because guess what? I'm no longer an M3, I'm done. I'm now an M4 at UIC. So for those of you that don't know, my name is Austin Wynn. I am an M4 at UIC. We just finished his third year clerkships, just finished step two. And I'm closing up our series on third year rotations with the last one, my pediatrics rotation. So this video is about how to honor and get that outstanding grade on a pediatric rotation. So as you can see here, as I do with all my honoring videos, I sort of show you my grade distribution and you know, praise to God, I was able to close out the perfect M3 year and honored all my clinical clerkships with PEDS with being the last one. And if you see my other videos on step two, you know, basically during PEDS, I took this as like a soft dedicated. So my PEDS rotation was six weeks and it's a pretty chill rotation. Maybe that's how it is at UIC, but I think across the country, it's generally more chill. It's not like a surgery rotation, but maybe not as chill as like a psych rotation. Um, but basically during the six weeks, I was really doing two blocks a day of UWorld and kind of reviewing old surgery, medicine questions and concepts just during the six weeks while I was doing my rotation. And then I really hit the ground running for step two with my 2.5 week dedicated period before my exam. But today I just want to really highlight the PEDS rotation. At UIC we kind of did it in different chunks. So there was like an ED week, outpatient week, inpatient week, a mother baby week, and then specialty service week where I was on pediatric hematology and oncology. But for this video I'm going to really focus on just inpatient, outpatient, and then mother baby because I think universally from what I've talked to from other students across the country those are the three kind of universal ones that you'll have on your PEDS rotation so hopefully this will get you all started on knowing exactly what to expect how to crush this rotation so if you have any questions don't forget to comment below and don't forget to subscribe to if you find these videos helpful or anything on my channel I'd greatly appreciate it but without further ado let's get into it Alrighty, so like all my rotations, I like to break things down into the clinical side of things and then the NVME side of things. So we'll start with the NVME because now that it's the last clinical rotation, if you've been following my series of videos, you already know what I'm going to say and it's Anki and UWorld. I've been doing the same thing the entire year. Anki, keep the cards circulating and then UWorld. I mean, every rotation actually in some ways it builds upon each other. So, I mean, I'm gonna make a new video soon now that I'm done with my rotations about like what the ideal rotation order I think would be in my opinion, having done all the rotations. Um, but basically, like I said, I think no matter what order you get, it's obviously not an end all be all, but there is a certain amount of like foundation that just builds upon each other. So if you keep the Anki cards going, not only will it really help you on step two, but it helps you on subsequent shelf exams and with other material that crosses over. Like if you did medicine before pediatrics, a lot of medicine concepts really overflow into a lot of the other uh, rotation topics. But basically for this exam, I thought it was really fair. I actually got my highest score on the PEDS exam. Maybe it was because I was getting ready for step two and it was my last exam, but it went really well. And overall, I think like it's more chill of a rotation because there's only about 500 U world questions. Uh, I didn't do any NBMEs for this exam, but generally NBMEs are pretty helpful for these shelf exams as well. So I'd recommend that if you're, I think willing to shell out the 20 to $25, but you can probably find a, some offline versions too, but keep it low key. Uh, anyways, um, questions wise, I think like just really knowing like the time structure of when things that occur, like a vulvalis in that period, usually like less than four weeks. And then um, the atresias, like the wadno atresia between the first couple of days of life. And then of course, like your classic pyloric stenosis around four to six weeks for that thickening to occur. I mean, that stuff is really um, important. And then obviously knowing your like primitive reflexes and then your like growth milestones, like when should a baby start babbling or cooing and smiling and walking and saying mama dada like those things are going to be like the high yield stuff i think on the exams and then just the more you world practice questions to do in anki you'll be in pretty good shape to do well in the exam let's jump over to the clinical side of things i think this is really where you can make a big difference and honestly everyone in pediatrics i know it's a stereotype I try not to stereotype but everyone is just so nice like and so generally the clinical grades from what i've seen and what i've heard are usually pretty good in pediatrics because 
everyone's just so nice and if you just work hard follow directions and don't get on anyone's bad side which is pretty hard to do that in pediatrics again but um, just keep working hard and I mean babies are cute and you get to see and work with kiddos and you know I think in a lot of specialties you get to work with kiddos too so they're good skills to have and good bedside manner so speaking of bedside manner let's kind of start with that when you're in the room with a kid a minor right you're gonna usually have a guardian or a parent in the room so make sure you're addressing the parent as well as the child that you explain everything and just be vocal what you're gonna do so I'm gonna you know examine your ear here I'm gonna pull back from this so that the parents know what you're doing and also the kid knows what to expect I mean this is simple stuff that you've done throughout other rotations I'm sure so just you know kind of have that um, framework in mind and now I'm gonna go into more specific advice for different services so we'll start when the babies are really small and that's in mother baby so these babies are literally just born they might be born like an hour ago 30 minutes ago or 12 hours ago something like that and the big thing with mother baby is that there's not much to do honestly for the exams a lot of it is based on like objective findings of how the baby is doing like what's going on in terms of like their weights are they feeding properly uh, have they had wet diapers yet have they had any bowel movements and you know basically that was kind of like my experience with this i think the most um best piece of advice i can have from other babies that you really need to know your presentation style really well so i have it kind of written down here because i honestly don't remember it super well but there's a lot of templates that i was using at the time and i can leave this in the description but generally before like you introduce um, anything for the baby if it's a new patient a new baby you should really give a little bit of a background of what was going on and you know a short little snippet you can use is as follows it's like you should say this is a you know 12 hour old baby boy born to a 27 year old g2 p2 002 at 37 weeks and two days via a um, sterile or spontaneous vaginal delivery Pregnancy was complicated by preeclampsia without severe features. Apgars were eight and nine at one and five minutes, respectively. Maternal labs were Hep B negative, RPR negative, HIV negative, rubella negative. Pregnancy was complicated by GBS, but adequately treated with penicillin. Rupture of membranes was 10 hours. Maternal blood type was A positive, baby is A positive, Coombs negative. Just like a give a background like that, where all the information is very succinct and then go into like what's going on for baby. You always wanna focus, like I said, on objective measures. So right now, what's the baby's weight? Birth weight was this in this percentile. Current weight is now this. So the current weight is okay in the first couple of days. We have to actually go down, that's actually normal, but not by too much, maybe by, by five or 6%, that's, that's fine. What's the temperature of the baby? Are they having a fever, yes or no? No, temperature is afebrile, pulse is X, Y, Z respiratory rate and then are they feeding is it breastfeeding is it bottle feeding and how often are they feeding are they breastfeeding every two to three hours or or what and then within the first 24 hours you need one wet diaper and one bowel movement so make sure you keep an eye out on that also make sure you know the different ranges for the pulse respiratory rate and the heart rate I mean it's actually different for kids and especially newborns so remember kids actually have lower blood pressures and higher uh, heart rates than normal adults. So make sure you really review those guidelines and know like, what's normal and what's abnormal. At one day of age, 24 hours, you'll do a few labs. You're going to do a transcutaneous bilirubin, make sure that they're not at risk of jaundice or cernicterus. You're going to do a cardiac screen, a hearing test, and then a newborn screen, which tests for like genetic abnormalities. So just like kind of know and keep an eye out over those things or put the labs in and stuff. So you can kind of be on top of that. So keep track of the Billy Rubin. You can use something called Billy Tool, which is like a feature to kind of see like when you would need like phototherapy for elevated Billy Rubin levels. So kind of be on top of it and your seniors will explain this up to you. But I'm just trying to give you all a heads up so you can really sound really smart, know all your information, stay on top of it, even put it in order and pen them so you can get that great grade uh, other than that that's kind of what I have from mother baby so comment below if you have questions we're now gonna jump over to the outpatient side so an outpatient I think the biggest thing and this is kind of universal across like other um, services as well but you really should know like the different dosing regimens and medications that you use so in kids it's important to know that a lot of it's weight based so you're not going to give the same dose in an adult that you do in a kid and a lot of times kids can't tolerate certain types of medicines so they'll be doing more like syrups and stuff so make sure you really look on up to date and know your dosages and those medication regimens well 
And then honestly, outpatient was pretty slow and it was like pretty like low stakes. You know, a lot of it was common pathologies like respiratory stuff, asthma exacerbations. Um, and then the big thing was like infections and just sicknesses too. A lot of sick kids. Kids love to get sick. It's normal. It's part of growing up and building those antibodies. So really know your examination uh, skills well for that. And like I was talking earlier, again, make sure you really talk to the patient and also talk to the parents. Keep everyone on the same page. Have good bedside manner and kind of know what things to look for. You know, like acute otitis media, for example super common in kids, kind of know how to look inside someone's ear, tell them you're going to look in their ear, going to pull their ear back, you know, look inside, look for that bulging tympanic membrane, like that decreased, you know, mobility, the more rigidity there, and then know the dosages of amoxicillin to treat it. You know, things like that I think can help you stand out and just make sure you get that information and present it in a very succinct way. Now, in regards to presentations and outpatient, inpatient, it's really similar like internal medicine. But for those of you who maybe have not done internal medicine, you know, if it's like a new patient, you do the whole HPI, you know, make sure you go over everything, family history, social history, allergies, medications, all that stuff. And then once you already know the patient, you can just do soap note style. So kind of giving updates of what happened over the past 24 hours. Now I'm gonna close this video by just going over the inpatient side of things. And this is obviously for more patients that are acutely sick, they're staying overnight in the hospital. You'll have earlier rounds and there'll be some more chart checking to do, but this was honestly not too bad as well. It's a lot of front heavy uh, morning stuff during the day because you're doing a lot of rounds and table rounds and teaching. But at the end of the day, once you finish your notes, um, you're pretty much done and good to go, uh, which is really nice and good for studying and doing other stuff. Uh, but in the inpatient setting, I think you should really be familiar um, with like common pathologies. Like I mentioned before, like pretty severe asthma exacerbations and respiratory distress stuff is like pretty common that you'll see on the inpatient side of things. So kind of know the differentials for like RSV, for croup, you know, kind of know what things to look for, like that inspiratory strider. Uh, I think that's you know really helpful, and then like other like GI pathologies that you might see. Overall, I think like peds is really nice just because a lot of the kids they don't have like chronic medical illnesses they're not on 12 medications like you'll see on internal medicine so honestly the notes and the presentations are a lot more clean and a lot more simple so overall i think like this is going to be a really enjoyable rotation for you all you get to learn a lot about testing different reflexes on kids and seeing the moral reflex and just seeing you know the development over time and make sure you know like all the stuff i mentioned earlier like the growth stages, the vaccination schedules, and know when people get which vaccines. Like you'll see that throughout outpatient and inpatient side of things, you're reviewing stuff, especially in the day and age of COVID vaccines and such. Just make sure you stay on top of all those things. And honestly, I know you're gonna do great. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful. Have a great rest of your week. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a good one and take care.